Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This is your narrator, and I am going to share some interesting stories with you all today. So let's get into our first one without any delay. On the 1st December, I got the news I was dreading. All of the tests have confirmed the diagnosis, I have stage 4 pancreatic cancer. So basically, this will be my last holiday season. I'm at peace with what is going to come. I have had a life well lived, all of my loved ones will be taken care I am naturally a private person, so my wayward wife Jane is unaware of my tests, I did not want to worry her until I had answers. So I headed home early to have the talk, this is not something I wanted to do over the phone or by text, well, as you can guess, since I am here, my life changed more than once. That afternoon when I arrived at the house, I noticed the car of one of my business partners in the drive, there was no mistaking it. Flashy expensive with a personalized license tag, to say this is out of the ordinary is an understatement. I pull up our home camera system on my phone and notice it is in privacy mode, which means not recording, so I let it be and drove off to my farm property. Now our camera system is for safety, and I never look at it unless there is a concern. With that said, I also love to watch for wildlife on the outside cameras. I also find it oddly satisfying to watch storms come through. So for my enjoyment years ago, I configured a second video recorder to archive the cameras to local storage. That storage is not accessible via my phone. So when I was at the farm, I opened up my computer and looked at the other server to confirm what my gut was telling me, and sure enough there they were, snuggling in the living room drinking wine, and dancing, then going up to the bedroom suite. Apparently, they left the doors open because the microphone recorded their activities after they left the camera view. With my limited time left, I wanted answers, but didn't want the drama of a confrontation and divorce. Call me what you will, but all of my devotion and love for her left me that afternoon. I have all of the emotions that are to be expected. I know that I am not to blame. I have been a loyal romantic and a tuned partner. I am now thinking about myself, I know what is important to me, so I called my lawyer and we reviewed my will and our print up, I told him what was going on, we worked on an understanding of how long and to what extent this affair has been going on, what has been found is disturbing, and I either clearly did not know the woman I shared two plus decades of life with or something in her change, at this time. I am not going to say anything to my kids, my wayward wife, and I never had children involved or wayward wife, I am going to put on a stiff upper lip and get through the holidays, give the kids and grandkids one last holiday memory with me involved, I will be the doting father and grandfather and then try to play the doting husband role, some background for some of the obvious questions. A fair partner is a widower and is not remarried, he is a business partner, but not a friend. I do not invest with friends, I never married my twin's mother, male, and female, it was her choice, and I completely agree with her that at that time, she made the correct decision. My kid's mother, Sarah, married a very wonderful man, Steve, when the kids were seven, Sarah and Steve never had kids of their own. I got my head out of my ass when the kids were three, I have been very involved with them before that but that is when I started my road to be the father I wanted to be. Sarah and I co-parented well together and I would call Steve a friend. Sarah, Steve and I are in our 60 seconds. Jane is almost 60. A fair partner is in his 50 seconds. Jane and I are both in our first marriage. We were in our 30 seconds when we married. Update. First, I want to thank you all for all your support. It really has helped. I have read all of your comments, and it has given me a lot to think about. I'm going to give some general information to help clarify my situation. Sarah and I were very young when we had twins. They were a surprise, but always wanted so the twins are in 40 seconds and the grandkids are all teens and older. Christmas is a week-long affair every year. We spend Christmas through a new year on the farm. We go cut down a tree after everyone arrives. We decorate cook play and celebrate as a family. Sarah and Steve have been a part of this tradition since I bought the farm. I remained steadfast in not telling anyone until after the new year. If I told Sarah, she would not be able to keep it in. 
I don't want to play Steve in a position to lie to his wife, I want the kids and grandkids to enjoy the week. We will have plenty of time to cry and prepare, in a few weeks, Jane's presence this week will just be a small detail in the long run, really, I don't care about her anywhere near the rest of the family. The finances are very interesting. Jane and I met and were married after we both were very established in our job and wealth. She had a good job with a great pension. She also had two inheritances that were in a trust we agreed early on that we were both comfortable and we would not disclose to each other our entire worth. By her insistence, we also have a print up where any property and trust that predate the marriage and any income from those resources are not considered marital property. Again, on her insistence. Now I have provided both properties housing with utilities I purchased the travel food and fuel. Basically, I support her 100%. Her income and wealth are spent by her only. She purchased her car clothes, personal travel, and cosmetic surgery. She is a very beautiful woman on the outside, but has shown she is very ugly inside. A few days after I got my diagnosis, I announced my retirement from the nonprofit. Now knowing what I know I know Jane was a bit uncomfortable. I can guess why, I will be around more often. So tomorrow is my last day of work, now I will be focusing on spending time with the family. I gave the camera server info to my lawyer and gave him access from his office, so I don't know if they had activities again, but I would assume yes. Again, I don't care at this point. I know who I am and what is my worth. AP is a big step down as flashy as AP is I am low key. I drive a 15 year old pickup truck. I like jeans and t-shirts and coveralls in the winter. I know for a fact that AP does not have anywhere near the wealth that Jane thinks he does. How? Since the trust has invested in his business, I get quarterly financials. I don't tell anyone how much I have. That is between my accountants and me. But let's just say that the trust has been growing for 30 years, I live a modest life, and there is enough there for my great, great grandchildren to enjoy the farm and have their education paid for. Once Jane knows what she lost that will be her reckoning and just won't see it. December really got busy, we did our normal social rounds these last weekend. AP was at one of the parties, it was hard to not keep an eye on Jane and him. I don't think I was caught with being so busy and wrapping up everything at the job, I have had an easier time keeping it together, Jane has not expressed anything that would lead me to conclude that she knows, I know I am not proud of this, but I still sleep in the same bed, I have been selfish with her as of late, I feel like I am using her, but she has apparently been using me for at least the better part of this year, I am not as honorable as many of you have made me out to be, I hate this small amount of deceit so don't worry about Jane getting everything because she will not. The trust is in great hands. I have detailed instructions on how it is to be managed, thanks to the comments, I have made plans in case my health turns for the worst sooner than I want or if I pass unexpectedly, I have also made plans to have in home care when it is needed, Jane will not be my caregiver if I become incapacitated. The lawyer will tell Sarah Steve and the kids, Jane will be blocked from me. All important papers valuables and whatnot have been moved to a safe location. Finally, I have also started letters to each family member in Jane. Those have been harder than I thought, so I wanted to update you all before all of the festivities start. I might check in during holiday week, but if I don't, it is planned and expected. Hey, oh, P. I hope you have a fantastic holiday season with your family. Enjoy your time and make the most of every moment both for yourself and for their lasting memory of you. If I were you, I'd pre-record a video that I would ask to get played during the funeral, and it'd start by thanking everyone for attending with the exception of Jane. I would then say something along the lines of I left this world and loved by my own wife, and I ask that if she is in attendance, that she does not attend my celebration of life. Following this video, I wish you all the best. Now let's get into today's second story. Hi there, I'm 40 years old. My wife is 35, and we've been married for about a decade. She and I started off with an amazing relationship. We waited to get married because she miscarried in a previous relationship. Eventually, I told her I wanted to get married even if she couldn't have a child. 
We did, and two years later, we welcomed our daughter. Things seemed great, but the tension was there at first, having a kid is exhausting as you probably know. When our daughter grew up, she claimed that I wasn't giving her as much attention. I explained that she was a new mom and a breadwinner, and I had to make sure that everyone was taken care of. I was trying my best, but I could feel the resentment getting to her. For a bit for a few years, we worked it out. Eventually, our daughter grew up, and it got easier to have a relationship still, I felt like there was some strange animosity that came with this, even though I did my best to fix this and made accommodations for her as well. While we did try to make things better, there was still some tension there, even though we did get past the tension before something still felt off. When our daughter started school, my wife went back to work. I told her that she didn't need to do that, but she insisted that she wanted to for another reason. I've been handling the bills, but I decided she was just being nice about it so I brushed it off. She spent less time at home, which I found to be a bit weird. Our daughter was a little older and I stepped up to be the one to take care of her. She would get home late sometimes because she told me she had to put a lot more time into the jobs that she missed so I found it weird, but I didn't try to question it. One night, we had a big fight over my daughter's grades. She accused me of not being there since I spent a lot of time at my own job. I called her out, but she called me narcissistic selfish and only caring about myself. I was shocked because she didn't seem to actively put effort into the relationship either. I was so confused, she became cold and a lot more distant. She was now more distant than before. I tried to make things better for both of us. I decided, hey, let me go to her workplace to surprise her. When I got there, she was gone. I called her to ask where she is. She told me about a restaurant nearby. I got there, but she was not there. She mentioned she changed her mind and she went somewhere else. I asked her, and I wanted to meet up what she said she couldn't say. She was not sure yet. At this point, I thought it was a bit strange. I decided to give her the benefit of the doubt though. She told me she's going to a work conference I asked where I could bring my daughter. She hesitated saying she was not sure yet. Now at this point, I didn't know what to believe and my gut feeling said something otherwise. I decided to check her work email since it was open and I found the hotel. I put a tracker on her luggage only to find out she didn't go to the hotel but instead to another nearby. Why in the world would she lie about where she was going and what hotel was she really at? Furious. I decided to follow her. I got to that hotel and figured out where she is from the tracking device that I used. When I got up there, I heard sounds of moans. And like I suddenly saw that the door is left open slightly, and that's when I found it. She was with another man, tears of sadness, and rage fell down my face, but I couldn't let her know just yet. I decided to wait for them to walk out they do, and I walked down the hall. I told her that I know everything that she'd been cheating on me with another man. She tried to lie, but I pulled out my phone which records their voices. I asked her plainly what really happened. She then goes off to say that I'm not attentive to her needs and that she wanted a divorce anyway. I got so angry. I told her that she shouldn't come home to see our daughter again. She confessed that as a co-worker and that she'd been talking for she said that she'd been going out with him because he paid for her meals. She claimed that she only kissed him, but the sounds were there. I was furious. She had a child with me. She claimed that I was the only one for her. How could she do this to me? Afterward, I left, but not without uploading the footage of her confession to the cloud. I told her boss about it that she cheated on me, broke a family apart and put her own needs before her daughters. They fired her. I kicked her out of the house. Everyone knows that she's a cheater, so I've made sure and have it known in everything possible. Since then, I don't know where she is, but I've been able to help my daughter recover. I stepped up, divorced her, and it's been two years. I've kept the details private from my daughter since she doesn't need to know. But since then, I've raised her and I've done my best to provide the best life that I can despite what her cheating mom did to me. Wow. That's terrible. You had a kid too. I can't believe that people would throw away a relationship like that. Relationships are about trust, and she broke that all because of a tough time and being unable to salvage that bond. I hope that the worst continues to have to her and that you and your daughter are able to move past this as well.
I also think your daughter needs to know about the affair and what happened. She definitely deserves to know. I wish you all the best OP. Thank you for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe.